Hey everybody, welcome to a bonus video on the Meta Lake. I'm John, as always, and Jumpstart came out today. If you don't know what Jumpstart is, it's a new sort of introductory thingy for newish players, but I think it could be some fun. Uh, so we'll give it a go here. Basically, we're going to pay some money and we're going to get two packs of cards. We're actually going to get to choose two packs of cards from uh, a set of three and then a set of three. And that's going to be two 20 card decks. They're going to shuffle together. We're going to have a 40 card deck and we're going to play. It's very much like the card game Smash Up, if you've ever played that, uh, or it's like sealed deck building, but we didn't actually deck build, we just smushed two things together. The uh, themes have different rarities. Uh, all the cards are legal in Historic, so it makes Historic a very different format now. And yeah, it could be some fun. Unfortunately, it is a 100% money sink, because uh, of course I don't care about the cards, so the only prizes I get is the enjoyment of playing it. So hopefully the enjoyment of playing it is worth 2,000 gold. So let's give it a go. So we get to choose our packets here and we can have heavily armored plus one or wizards. Uh, all we know is what land we get. Uh, so you do get special uh, basic lands that you can only get by taking these packs here. There are common themed packs, which have four different variations. So I think wizards are common, which means we don't know which of four packs we're getting here. On the other hand, I think plus one is rare, which means there's two variations. And then there are mythic variations, uh, which uh, there is only one variation of. So I kind of want to go for plus one here. Plus one, plus one counters are often very, very, very good. So let's take plus one here. And we could do well read plus one, tree hugging plus one, or witchcraft plus one. Um, green blue what is well red going to be well red's probably going to be card draw probably have rousing read in there witchcraft not entirely sure what that would be although that swamp is pretty cool uh oh that island's really cool though the all the books there i actually really like that well red plus one is kind of a weird thing but let's go for it so let's see what we get <clears throat> so we can take a look at our plus one well red deck and we can see that we got curiosity opt Arbor Armament, Wildwood Scourge, Mystic Archaeologist, so we're definitely going to be drawing cards. Um, we get to Proliferate a bit, Rune Servitor, Suspicious Bookcase, Library Larcenist. Wow, R Rousing Reed is not in Well Read. Uh, branching Evolution, two and a green. If one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on a creature you control, twice that many plus one plus one counters are put on it instead. Invigorating Surge, Pride Milk, and Truffle Snout. Obviously, a lot of these cards are from M21. Champion of Lambhold. This is back from, uh, I think it was in Dark Ascension. I don't believe it was in original Innistrad or Avacyn Restored. Uh, so creatures with power less than it can't block creatures I control. Uh, Gadwick, Capture Sphere, o -O Nerophage. When you draw a card, put a plus one plus one. So it's a, it's a flying lore scale quaddle for one more mana. Cool. Tome Anima, Hunter's Edge, Lifecrafter's Gift, Cloud Reader Sphinx, and Delirian Kraken. And then we have the Thriving Lands. Cool. All right. Well, let's play a couple of matches. They're best of one, unfortunately, which I think is also going to hurt the fun of it just a little bit. Um, but since you can play as much as you want, the losses don't matter, which is kind of nice. So let's see what happens here. We've got a whole bunch of islands. We do get a free mulligan as well, um, which I think we might use because we're not casting these for a while. So let's take our free mulligan. <clears throat> Our free mulligan gives us a rune servitor, which uh, is okay, and a beetle on two. Going to be tricky to get the, the creature with four power for a little bit, but we can keep this for sure. And I believe we're playing first. Let's go forest. And I think we'll get the servitor out first, um, just because this Nessian beetle is not going to start growing too quickly. Our opponent is blue. I don't know what island that is specifically. Uh, so we can drop another one. We can get in for two, and I guess we'll drop the beetle here. <clears throat> Follow that up with the Tome Anima. Uh, black certainly looks like zombies to me. So we can get in for four. Uh, Nebelgast Herald. 2-1 Flash Flyer. This is from Shadows, right? 2-1 Flash Flyer. Uh, when it or another spirit ETBs tap dark creature your opponent controls so they might be spirit zombies um, I'm happy to have us both draw a card I think they do not want to trade so let's drop a tome anima tome anima do, 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 do. 
Tomanima. All right. Tomanima's a spirit. Huh. Who knew that? I sure didn't. Uh, okay, so we probably just drop this Cloud Reader Sphinx because we don't have anything to... We could put a counter on some... Uh, when is this? This is beginning of combat. So we could put a counter on Tomanima, which would then start the counters going on Horn Beetle. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go Pollen Bright, counter on Tomanima, go to combat, get a counter on Horn Beetle, swing in with Tomanima. There we go. So this has kind of a Momir feel to me where we don't have control over our decks, we don't have control over what's happening, but we need to read the board state. We need to think about what's happening in the actual game. And I'm pretty happy with that. Um, cool. So we could play Branching Evolution and get a pair of counters on that Horn Beetle every turn. That sounds very good to me. So we're going to get a 5-5 five, five here, which I'll happily attack in with. 4-4 uh, four, four as well. We'll pass the turn. <clears throat> They're going to take the 5, block the Carrion Grub on the Tome Anima. Sure. Shacklegeist, uh, okay. Okay, so they're definitely spirits. Uh, yeah, I'll take five, no problem there. We're gonna have a seven, seven horn beetle. Um, can't cast Gadwick. So, let's get our seven, seven horn beetle here. They do not have two spirits to tap. Oh, they have frost breath though. All right, all right. That's pretty good. In that case, let's get a, a Cloud Reader Sphinx down. Don't want those. So hopefully that Cloud Reader has put a stop to their spirits for a bit. Looks like it has. Um, we're going to drop the Mystic Archaeologist, I suppose. Let's go to combat and get our uh, our counters here. And then let's drop the Archaeologist. <clears throat> Oof, rewound. All right. No Archaeologist for me. They're going to tap my Sphinx. Uh, so what are they going to do? Are they going to get in for four? I doubt it. They're going for it. Um, okay, I'll chump. So I take four, go to seven. I've got some pretty serious beef. Doomed Necromancer. Three mana, two, two. Pay a black, tap, sack it. Return target creature. Uh, ooh, just straight up reanimate. They have nothing in the yard to reanimate, though. So we've got Trample, so that seems pretty decent for us. So we can Pride Malkin, the Horn Beetle. It's going to become an 11 11. It's going to become a 13 13. Flash in Rattle Chains. Wait, where? Oh, Nebelgast did the tap. <laughs> I could not figure out where that tap happened. Um, so we have no attacks now. All right, fair enough, fair enough. So we're taking four in the air. Uh, if they can draw a card here, we actually die to that Tome Anima. <clears throat> but they cannot. Uh, so let's go to combat. They're going to need to tap that Horn Beetle. Gonna need to tap that horn beetle. Man, Onirophage with the plus one plus one counter deck. That works pretty well. Alright, so tap the, the, the horn beetle. No attacks from my side. We're gonna go with Onirophage here. Get another flyer. It's gonna get two counters a turn at a bare minimum. And we'll see how we go. <clears throat> I assume this is a new card. I've never seen it before. Might not be though. They're gonna tap my Sphinx, sure thing. Man, if we can deal with that Shacklegeist, then this Horn Beetle is uh, <laughs> gonna have some things to say. They're gonna come in for four. I mean, I'll take it. <clears throat> Uh, 
I'm not losing this Onerophage, especially not when it's going to become an amazing blocker here. Uh, so put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, then put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Oh boy, let's do that. So let's put two counters on the Sphinx, and then everything gets two counters. So our Horn Beetle is going to be a 19-19. <clears throat> They're going to capture Sphere the Horn Beetle. Fair enough. And uh, our flying fellas here are going to trample on through. Oh, they tapped that down. Okay. So we can fly in for five and take them to two. Um, this will take them to one. As far as I can tell, they're dead. So let's make them dead. I think they're dead. I made a rookie mistake. They're not dead. <clears throat> wow. Rookie mistake going to be the thing that uh, takes me down. <laughs> well, all right then. All right. Oh, and one. Oh, and one. Let's do another one or two of these. That's pretty good, though. The deck seems like it can do its thing. And it seems like we got a good mesh there. The Onerophage from the Well Red getting counters, which works with the plus one thingy. So this is around for a month. I'm curious to see how long people play it for. Um, I don't know if it's going to have massive amounts of replayability. Um, okay. Okay. This horn beetle is the tricky thing to really get going, eh? But once it gets going, it gets going. So I think we're going to lead with the archaeologist. Because the horn beetle is really our, our our gravy train. That's how we're going to get there. Uh, so our opponent is angels, and something. Um, well, invigorating surge would make it a four four right away. So let's go with that. <clears throat> and it counts itself, right? No, it's another creature. Dang it. All right, so we'll play Mystic Archaeologist then. So this is Guardian Idol. It taps for a mana. Uh, ETB's tap taps for a mana, and you can pay two to make it a 2-2. Two -two. It's just a nice little mana rock. Uh, there's their Thriving Heath. So they named Black, so it is a white-black dual land. And they got Scroll of Avacyn. This card was horrible way back when. Uh, you pay one, and you get... Uh, if you have an angel, you gain five life. If you don't, you can pay one to sack it to do nothing. <laughs> uh, there was a scroll of Avacyn and a scroll of Grizzlebrand, and neither were great. We'll try to attack in for two here. Got there. So what we could do is we could invigorating surge our archaeologist, which would grow our horn beetle. I don't hate that plan, especially since now we have to race this angel. Um, I do have the option of dropping this own Nerophage instead. I think we need to trade with that Sarah angel, though, although this deck does have a freaking Baneslayer in it as well. Um, all right, let's right, let's, we're not under a ton of pressure just yet, so let's go with this. So the Onerophage will start getting bigger, and that could grow our Horn Beetle. We're going to take four. Nothing we can do about that. Don't Baneslayer me. I guess if they played Sarah Angel, they would have played Baneslayer first. So hopefully it's somewhere else in their deck. <clears throat> Celestial Enforcer, sure. And a Chorister, all right. All right, so there we go. Drew ourselves a card. So this Life Crafter's Gift could be really good if we can just get some counters going here. So let's Pollen Bright Druid. And let's pop a counter on the Archaeologist. 
and then we'll pass the turn. We'll invigorating surge end of their turn on the on the archaeologist, maybe, or maybe just on the anerophage. The Anerophage would block the Sarah Angel, right? It would get four counters. It would be a five something. So let's go for that. Invigorating Surge. Hope they don't have removal. I don't know what their black deck is. Vampires, maybe? I don't know what's going on in that art. Gaunty, Lord of Luxury. Okay. So they get to look at the top four cards in my library, put one face down, and then they get to cast it for uh, mana of any color. All right, let's hope they didn't get something really good. And then where do the others go? The others are graveyard, right? No, the rest go on the bottom. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So we're going to draw a card. We've got some big old beef here. Um, so let's go to combat. And then let's smash with team. Because we can make that Pollen Bright Druid uh, a 3-3. Three, three. So yeah, let's smash with team. All right, so Archaeologist will kill Gaunti, and that'll kill that. So yeah, this should be pretty blowout-ish here. So there's... Basically, they're bored dead. They're down to 12. Oh, we do lose our archaeologist. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Uh, they can no longer cast this card that has been exiled, I don't think, right? Oh, no, I think they can. I think they can, but we won. So there we go. One and one. One and one, plus one, plus one counters. Very, very good. Who knew? Who knew? Let's go in for one more here. See if we can get our prize. So we get a Scholar of Lost Trove. So the card that you win will always be a jumpstart card. Um, one of the new... Uh, I don't know if it's explicitly the new jumpstart cards, like the ones that have never been printed before, or if it's just the new historic jumpstart cards. Um, but I believe that was a new one. So let's go and try and get our second win here. See if we can do it. But this is fun. I, I, I don't think it's 2,000 gold fun. I, I will say I don't think it's 2,000 gold fun. Uh, fun. Not since that is uh, one-fifth of a draft. I don't think this is one-fifth of a draft fun. Um, but it's still fun. I think it would be way more fun in paper. Uh, and I think we're, we're going to keep this one because we've got good stuff here. Uh, I think we're going to do a Discord tournament of this. Uh, so on my Discord, if you're a subscriber on Twitch or Patreon, you can join that Discord. Um, we're going to do a tournament. So everybody will pay their 2,000 gold, get themselves a jumpstart deck. We'll do some pairings and see who wins. And the winner will get a sense of pride and accomplishment. So they can discard two cards, make a zombie. Sure. Uh, we will go for our good old friend, the Horn Beetle. <clears throat> you going to make a zombie? No? All right. So they are zombie witchcraft. Okay, three mana. Um, I think we're just going to drop a rune servitor here. Yeah. And then we're not going to attack that horn beetle into a zombie. No chance. Follow that up. If we hit a land, we'll definitely drop the anerophage. Bog Brew Witch. So 1 3, pay 2, tap, search your library for Festering Newt or Bubbling Cauldron, put it on the battlefield. Um, and then stuff happens if you do all of that. So we'll drop a Truffle Snout with a counter because that's going to make it real close to having four power, and Invigorating Surge will finish that off, or even Pollen Bright Druid will finish that off. So let's go Truffle Snout, get a counter. And we'll pass the turn. Uh, now, unfortunately, this is also the only way for you to get the new historic cards other than wild card crafting. You can't just buy packs of Jumpstart. 
Uh, so if you do want to get those cards for historic and you don't want to pay the wild cards or you don't have the wild cards and you don't want to buy all the packs to get the wild cards, you will have to jump into jumpstart to get those cards. Um, and again, it's going to be kind of tricky because you just get whatever random packs you have to choose from. And if it's a common or rare pack, you don't even know which pack you're getting. So 4-4 four, four Death Touch, at the beginning of their end step, if they gained life, each opponent sacrifices a creature and they return a creature card graveyard to hand. Okay, so that works pretty well with the zombie infestation. Uh, so we are going to Pollen Bright Druid. We're going to need to find our fourth land. If we find our fourth land, I think we're in very good shape. Pollen Bright Druid, let's proliferate the Truffle Snout. So then we can start getting counters on the Horn Beetle. Still no attacks. We're not attacking into a 4 4 Death Toucher. We'll pass the turn. Boy, Hunter's Edge will deal with that witch really, really, really cleanly. But we need that fourth land. Real bad. <clears throat> real, real bad. Woe Strider. That's another good card. Our opponent over here is playing amazing cards, and we are not. So this is the green land, so we're going to name blue. And then I guess pass the turn. Is it likely that we're going to play Invigorating Surge next turn, or on their turn? I don't think so. So let's actually play the Archaeologist. Luckily, they're not really doing anything, and they don't have ways of gaining life. Although I feel like the Newt and the Bubbling Cauldron do. I can't remember exactly what those cards do. We're going to find out what one of them does. Festering Newt, I think, is minus one, minus one when it dies, or you can sacrifice it. And the, cal the Cauldron, I think, might be gain life draw a card. Cauldron is sack a creature, gain four life. But if you sack Festering Newt, each opponent loses four life and they gain life. So they can now sack a creature to the Cauldron, gain life, force me to sack. Okay. We're going to need to get going here. But I think the Hunter's Edge is going to be the, the big start. Because Hunter's Edge kills the Witch and then we just smash. They're going to go get their Newt. Uh, I assume they're going to sack their Newt. So I'm going to lose four. They're going to gain four. I'm going to sack a creature. And they're going to return one of these creatures to their hands. Possibly just the Festering Newt. <clears throat> Wait, they get to destroy something too? Right. Minus four, minus four when Festering Newt dies. Okay, their combo has been assembled. And I don't know if we're going to get through it with how much we had to wait for our fourth land. So we're going to sack the Pollen Bright Druid. They are going to return the Festering Newt. So we not only need to kill the Witch, we also need to kill the Bog Brew. I think the Witch of the Moors is more important because our Truffle Snout will now be out of range. And we don't have a way of getting through that 4-4 otherwise. So yeah, let's kill the Witch. So this is now out of range of the Festering Newt being sacrificed. So we'll pass the turn. And then what? And then I don't know. I think we've lost this one. I think we've definitely lost this one. <clears throat> us getting land screwed for that many turns was definitely a little bit too rough crypt lurker okay crypt lurker instead of the newt interesting so they're going to sack their zombie draw a card play a land all right, now they can still drop their newt, sack their newt, kill Servitor, I guess. Um, okay, 
Giving me a little bit of time, huh? Well, 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 well. Let's drop the Kraken, I guess. But again, I don't know how we're getting out of this unless we can kill the Bog Brew, and I don't remember other removal in this deck. We have a Capture Sphere, but that's not what I need. So they can sack the Newt, deal four, gain four, kill Servitor, draw a card. <laughs> they got themselves a combo, and I did not. Well, we could make a big Wildwood Scourge, eh? One, two, three, four, five. We can make it a five, five. Get something else that'll be out of range of that Newt. We're going to bake my Kraken into a pie. All right. You've got Kraken pie. Well done. Play the Newt. Sack the Newt. Wait, where is the Newt? Newt's in the graveyard. Oh, right. They were getting the Newt back from the Witch, so they only got that one chance. So we're actually significantly back into this. I forgot that they were only going to be able to do that once. Um, in that case, I really kind of want to get this Onerophage going. Although I think a big Wildwood Scourge is probably just better. Especially because the Scourge will get counters thanks to the Onerophage. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. So we make a 5-5 five, five Wildwood Scourge. Pass the turn. Do you have another Festering Newt in your library? No. Is it library or graveyard? No, it is library. Okay, so they found they had another Festering Newt in their deck. Sure thing. So they can kill our Archaeologist, <clears throat> but that's not a big deal. Swarm of Blood Flies 2-2. Two, two. Whenever another creature dies gets a counter. Pretty good. That's going to need a Capture Sphere. Definitely going to need a Capture Sphere. <clears throat> so we can opt. Uh, we're going to own Nerophage here. Uh, so that will hopefully be the thing that they sack the newt for. That's going to make a 4-4 swarm already. Jesus. Um, barf. Let's go to combat. No attacks. Let's opt. <clears throat> Life crafter's gift. Um... That'll do something-ish. <clears throat> so we get a counter on the Phage, which gets a counter on the Scourge. But that Swarm's going to be the end of us. Cauldron, sack that. Kill Phage. Counter on the Blood. Yep, uh-huh. So that's a 4-4 that I think we have a single answer for in the deck. Um, we could also drop Cloud Reader Sphinx and then Life Crafter's Gift. Um, that's kind of our only way out. Also, our opponent's at 32, so I don't think we're winning this. Well, no, because we'd have to chump the Cloud Reader Sphinx on the Swarm. So we basically have to find Capture Sphere right here, right now. <clears throat> or we're dead. <clears throat> hmm. So yeah, we'll see how much play this has. Um, I think ultimately the best of one nature of it, the fact that losses don't matter, like we could just hit concede right now and we could just hit concede every match until we find the good opening hand that we really like. Um, I think that's going to really hurt the playability of it. So we can kill everything here, which leads us to, if we find Capture Sphere, we're okay. <clears throat> Their blood flies are going to be gigantic. They're going to last grasp that. Okay. So we're going to kill those. Blood fly is going to be a 7-7. Oh, actually, I am just dead. 
Six. Oh no, they can make. Can this sack itself? No, it cannot sack itself. Oh, but they can. Nope, they can't discard two cards. They only have one. They were hoping it could sack itself. Oh, they can use the cauldron. They figured it out. All right, we died. We died. So one and two. Um, I can keep playing as long as I want with this deck. Uh, I'm not going to for this video because I don't want to. Uh, I'm going to stream a little bit later today. Uh, but yeah, this is Jumpstart. Let me know how it's going for you. I want it to be fun. I think best of one hurts it. Um, and I think the losses not mattering hurts it. So we'll see how much I play. But let me know how it's going. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me over on Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook. You can find me at patreon.com slash if you want to help out that way. Um, that's how you get into the Discord, along with subbing on Twitch, where we'll do some jumpstart tournaments and play with each other. And that's going to be way more fun um, because Magic the Gathering is about the gathering. Like, share, subscribe is the easiest way to help out. And I'll see you all next time.